Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Good morning, the month of the Lord Church. All right, that's great. I'm so excited this morning. My name is Pastor Christoph. I'm a pastor here at the month of the Lord Church. I want to welcome you here for choosing to be part of what's going on this morning. This is the place we seek the face of God. At the same time, we celebrate Jesus Christ. So, welcome to the month of the Lord. You know, we're going to be sharing something today, and I'm going to be able to challenge you. God looks at the heart. You know, I remember when we were all growing up, we have attention to do something. We have our own ways. I, you know, I remember sometimes my brother, my father might ask you, what do you want to be? You know, this is the time to think about your future. Actually, we do well with that, you know. In my whole life, I was accounting, you know, for not knowing exactly what God wanted me to do until I find the call of God in my life. So the point we're going to be making today is about how we finish with what we want to do in our life. I know some people finish well, some people don't. And I know with my experience of life and what we, the God taught us right now, I believe when you start with God, it will be almost, I would say, probably that you will finish well with him. But in this life, when you started by just yourself, I believe sometime it will be difficult for you to finish well. How can we finish well? So today I want to challenge you with the message from Jesus Christ. We are going to look at three points. How God chooses his people. And the second point is, we need uh, sometimes to pay attention to our action. And the third one is uh, to trust in the Lord. We started with saying, God looked at the heart. We're going to read from 1 Samuel 15. I want to start from 34 to 16 through chapter 16 up to 13. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. And Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death. But Samuel grieved over Saul, and the Lord regret that he had made Saul king over Israel. Chapter 16, start verse, verse 1. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul since I have rejected him from being a king over Israel? Fill your home with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul heard, hears it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. And invite Jesse to the sacrifice. And I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me him whom I declare to you. There are some things going on here for those who are not here last week. All is about choosing Saul to be the king of Israel. His choice was not God's choice. His choice was people's choice. People, Haman, 
the hem on Saul, Samuel, asking him that they need a king going to be like every other king. And uh, even though in the process, God warned them what's going to happen. If you go this way, people still say, yes, we want it. So you get what you want. And we talked about last week, what could happen to us when we don't want to hear what God is saying to us. So Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elder of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably I come. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourself and come with me to the sacrifice. And he consecrated Jesse and his son and invited them to the sacrifice. So we are seeing the transition that's taking place right now. God is asking Samuel to go to choose the king that he would like. Not the one that fell. There are transition, the successor of a soul that is playing up here right now. So we are making, a, God is making his own choice and asking Samuel to go to the house of Jesse. Now he's in the house of Jesse. Now he's going to anoint the person that God wants to be the king over Israel. So verse 6. When they came, to, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord anointed, anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of the statute, because I have rejected him. So he came to the house of Jesse. Jesse had us of eight children. So what is going on here? You know, when you come to the, you look at the statue, you look at the person and say, oh, babe, maybe it's going to be there. God said, no, don't look to the statue of the person, how he's tall, good looking. That's not what I'm looking for. And now he's a prophet, but he's still getting the direction from the Lord in order that he anointed the right person that God wants for Israel. Hallelujah. He said, do not look on the on his appearance or on the height of the statute, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as men sees. Men look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looked on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadah, another son, and made him pass before Samuel. And he, he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Verse 9. Now Jesse made Shammah pass by. All the sons passed by, one by, by one by one. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Verse 10, and Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. One thing that's good here, and when I look at these things, is uh, Samuel is really listening to the voice of God. It's like uh, everybody in the house, everybody passed by, God said no, 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 God said no. And finally, if it was a Samuel, I was like, uh, in the household, nobody's left. Am I the wrong prophet? But one thing he did, he asked a question, and uh, uh, he said one thing here, and he said, there remain yet, uh oh what the question is. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen this. Then Samuel said to Jesse, the father of the, said, are you, are all your son here? And he said, there remain yet the youngest, but behold, he's keeping the sheep. He's still another son, he's not in the house. The youngest one, who's like a shepherd, who's just taking care of the business of his father. And Samuel said to, to Jesse, send and get him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. Verse 12, and he sent and brought him in. 
Now he was ruddy, ruddy, and had beautiful eyes, and was handsome. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward, and Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, now give us the Ramah, the understanding of your words, and build our faith Build our understanding and help us to grasp the truth of your word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. We see we are facing a king that's been rejected. Bible is talking about the king that is supposed, not supposed to be there in the first place because people want that kind of king. Now that king, as God promised the, through the prophet, everything's happened. Now they have a transition of a section and the throne of Israel. But Samuel did, not just because God said uh, people want a king, but you can see the thought, the thing that he did that disqualified Saul and the position that he hold on. You know, he did something that we all can say is wrong. Like uh, when, uh, when he rebelled. He rebelled because sometimes there are things you are limited to do, there are things you shouldn't be doing. This is the moment when they are, they got to be in a war with uh, Philistine. Because they're going to be in a war of the Philistine. He saw the number of the Philistine. He wants to do something that he's not supposed to do. Back then, before you go to war, you had to make a sacrifice to the Lord. He's a king. He's not a priest. But he was so scared that he stepped in in the position of a priesthood. And he did something that he shouldn't be doing. At that moment, that grieved the heart of God. And the Samuel came and he, he, he just faced him and said, what did you do foolishly? Why did you do this? And you know how we all like to give answer when we are in the trouble. He starts to give all the things. No, those people are here. I don't know what to do. So come like, it's like they're going to kill us, so I have to do the ceremony. I say, no, you were not supposed to do that, but you did it. One of the things he makes God mad, because you don't take God things literally for, for, for because the sake of doing it. And back then, to go to the priesthood to have a burnt offering is a secret thing. You, can play, you cannot play with the secret things in the kingdom of God. Whatever is for God, those who are in a position to communicate in the behalf of the people, let those people do the job, not you. But that's what he did. So Saul was being rejected because he rebelled. And one time also he disobeyed. They have, you know, when they come out of a out of uh, Egypt. They have problem with uh, Amalekites, the, the nation of uh, Amalek. So they really have not treated Israel so well. This is the time to take the whole land to destroy them. And God said, so take your army and go there, fight with them and destroy anything that you see. Not no animal, nothing else. But he went there, he did something totally different. He went to the land, he did what he's supposed to do, but he saved certain animal because he just loved animal, certain animal. He saved animal, and his reason is, I'm going to use those animals to sacrifice to the Lord. 
You see, sometimes God tells you to do things. Our people are in a position of authority, and the things get over their head. They can't even follow the law anymore. So he, he's a king. Is it somebody that the people admire because the position that he holds, but internally, before God, is not the man who respects God. He's doing things in his own will and not the will of God. So it comes to the point where God rejected him completely. Saul was completely disqualified as king, and a king was given to a neighbor. A man after the law heart. David, at that moment, is introduced in the Bible as a soul successor. David was chosen by God and anointed by Samuel. At that moment, he was young and qualified. But you know why? Before you get to the throne, before you start to execute things that God called you to, they have a process. There are many of you have anointing upon you, but you got to understand that they are, that anointing that is upon you and may not be revealed right now. But there are moments that you have to go through the process to the point where when it, your moment comes, you start showing the exploit. There are moments for everybody in this life. Sometimes people say, well, I can do this because you saw somebody doing something. You say, I can do this. I just want to tell you the example of our son. You know, he always scared. He's always in uh, a computer stuff. And uh, when we talk about God, he have his own things to do. To the point where, especially in this pandemic moment, things have changed completely in his life. It started with ministry now. We have a mission in Togo, so he, he go there when he want. Now, he's going there constantly. And what happened? He's the one who's doing Sunday school every Sunday morning. How that started? That, 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 that thing is upon him, but nobody, he himself, he can, he can see it. But when the time come, people step in, and the unction that has been upon them, and they start moving in the direction that God has already planned. That's why, brother and sister, never discourage people for the potential that God has for them. Yes, today people might look like uh, nothing before you, but God has a plan for every one of our life. When God said that I know the plan that I have for you, he's talking to his children, your people that have been called out of the darkness to bring it to the house of worship, to the place where we can see each other the way God sees us. And the God is saying that I know the plan that I have for you. I know my plan is to make you successful. The success is not just money, good to have. The success is to have a good relationship. The success is to have a good, be a good father. The success is to be the light, like we just read from Matthew chapter 5. The success is so many things. God wants those things in our life. The plan of God is not the plan of man. So God, what he does, he looks at the heart. You know, I, I just love the fact that God can just use anybody of us. You know, I don't care how, how level you be educated. I don't care how things look good in your life, how many money you have in the bank. For God, it doesn't matter. He just wants your heart. He just wants somebody who can obey him. He just wants somebody who can say that here I am, use me. A God is capable of using you. Now David is in a position being chosen to serve the Lord and take the, the direction of Israel. So how God chooses, God look at the heart. Hallelujah. God look at the heart. I know in, the, in, in our society right now, we, 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 you know, we, we have a perception that when people look good, then they have everything, right? 
You think, oh, he might be a good character. He can be moral standard. But that's not the way things work. We all know that. It doesn't work that way. The Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by the, uh, his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. Another word, you went to the Jesus' house, but all the kids that were seen, they look good, they are older, they are in a position to hold office, but that's not what I'm looking for. I saw them all, but I want a little boy who we call David, who have a oh, good heart, who have the heart to serve me. The one that you have set apart to do my ministry, I saw him. You haven't seen it, but I, God, I saw that man. I want him to serve me. God revealed the difference between himself and the world. He is God, and we are not. He saw things that we can see. He's ultimately almighty God. That's why we have to bow down. We have to learn his way and not our ways. Because our way cannot bring us too far. We started, we never finished well. But when we get God's ways, because we are not in the will, when you choose God's way, God is in the will to direct you to the place you're supposed to go. That way we stay in God's will. This is so clear. Men look at the appearance. The Israelites expect the leader to have an impressive physical and good looks. That's what we all do in the society. It happened before. You know, we, we spend so much time, energy, and money to look like a person that the people, like we can please anybody. Is it it's bad? No, it's not bad. But those things is uh, it pretended to, to make you feel like something's going on, but some people are just not there. The Lord does not look at the things that people look at. God's ways are simply higher than our ways. That said, the verse is recorded for us to learn to align our ways with him. Our ways are supposed to be God's ways. You know, when your ways become God's ways, all those fears that we usually have, all those problems with the little things that we are so depressed, Little things we talk, we talk, we don't gonna go anywhere. We keep talking, 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 and we don't go anywhere. Why not just embrace God's ways in your life? God said, I will set up a peace in your heart. I will be there for you all the time. This is the moment of the glorious moment to be in God's ways, not to choose your own ways, because our own ways is just not working. But the point is, can you embrace God today in your heart? Can you receive God that can give you all those things we are talking about right now? People tend to judge the character and the worth of others by looking at out, outward appearances. Those things, it doesn't work so well. But God has the unique ability to see inside a person. God knows our true character because he looks at the heart. The outward appearance doesn't reveal what people are really like. Physical look don't show us a person's value, character, integrity, and faithfulness to God. It doesn't. Outward quality are, by definition, superficial. So what we are saying today is, my challenge, and I'm still telling you, is I want you to walk out of this place, start thinking about who you really are. Yes, I'm happy, everything's going well, but who you really are is your heart. As your heart will tell yourself who you really are. The proverb moral, moral and spiritual consideration are far more important to God. Like God look at the heart. The heart in the scripture is a personal, inner, moral, and a spiritual life. The Proverbs 4.23 says, Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flow from it. 
guard your heart for everything you do flow from it. And Luke 6, 45, a good man brings good things out of the good store up in his heart. And an evil man bring evil things out of the evil store up in his heart. For the mouth speak what the heart is full of. I pray for myself, for all of us, to have God to help us. God to help us that every single day we can see ourselves more than conqueror. Because the more than con- the spirit of conquering to be over everything is your condition, your position with the Lord. And you cannot have a divided heart and be in a good condition with the Lord. The way we do it is a good heart. If your heart is clear and you can say to yourself, me and my God, we are one, you, can, you better celebrate it. You better take a good vacation and just go enjoy it because you and God, you are one. And God can see your heart clear. The heart that to obey, uh, uh, obedience heart. The heart that to receive, the heart that to say, when you mess up, you can say, forgive me. The heart, that's where things are happening. Look, one of the disciples, uh, the disciple of Jesus. Just take that example. To everyone who saw him, who saw uh, Judas, Scario, he looked a faithful disciple. He's around, around everybody. The rest of the 11 disciples, they were there, they were all smiling, but Judas Scario knew exactly what he's planning to do. Nobody knew it. Nobody knew it, but God knew his heart. This is, this is the life we, I'm talking about. You know, we all know what we have in our heart, but we cannot play with God. He knows everything. So when God knows everything, and you want to talk to God so God can receive your word, and you want to be in a good relationship, what do you do? You ask God to help you. So many people cannot get away from the evil deed, just call it evil deed of sin that they have all the time. But God said, cleanse up yourself, set yourself apart. That means that to say no for things that I, I, I shouldn't be doing. And I want to get close to the Lord because my God is holy. My God wants my heart. I want to have a good relationship with him. I want to be blessed. I want myself to be, have a confidence that when I talk to my almighty God, he listens to my voice and he hears me. And I can have a good relationship with him. That's the kind of life I think we're all going to be seeking for. Because when you come to that level, it doesn't matter what people think about you. It doesn't matter how people think you are. Because the, what matters to you is your good relationship with your creator. That's where we want to be. Every single person want to be in a good place where you just have so much confidence that I have a good relationship with my father. Because after all, we are going to give account of our life one day. That's what the scripture said. The Bible said that when we live in this planet, we live here, in this world, then we will be in the presence with the Lord. And that's the moment you're going to tell God everything you have done here. So it's better for me to start to work things out. Right now, because I know I'm a human, things are happening, but God, I need your help to help me through the process. I can't do this by myself. I need your help. That's where honesty and all these things is needed. You know, God can pierce into our heart, examine our motivation, and, and he knows because he knows already. The Psalm uh, 139 talk about he knows everything about you and me. I love uh, Hebrew 4, chapter 12. So the, for the word of God is alive and active, sharpened than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joint and, and marrow. It judges the thought and attitude of the heart. God, this is where we want to be. 
You know, the good things about God, he doesn't condemn you. He said that, oh, you are so bad, I don't need you anymore. No, that's not what God we have. God just wants you to take your responsibilities, that's all. You know, whatever you did, just say to God, I did it. But I can get myself out of it. You got to help me here. If you can go to the Lord with a kind, the kind of a spirit of humility, you're already in the hand of a loving Father who cares for you. He wants to save you. God, he wants to do great things in your life. You know, God see what people can see. Look at the David. God chose David. But God knew what's going to happen to David. It's not that the devil was so perfect. You know, he committed adultery. He, he murdered. He did something. But something about David that I believe we all need to have. That means that we are not perfect. We fall all the time into sin. We did things we shouldn't be. So what happened to David? God, God saw in David a man of deep abiding faith who was wholly committed to the Lord. Because you're going to be fighting all the time. The devil can try to come to disrupt you. Well, God saw a man who will receive David, who will recognize his sin and a failure, and who will repent and ask the Lord for forgiveness. That's life. It happened to you, say, God, I blew up again. Help me. Never be discouraged to do that. If a good heart go to the Lord, when things is not working, always he say, I, I, I just so love Jesus. He say, knock the door for me. Always call me. Talk to me. That's why we talk. We always talk about this. Christianity is about relationship. It's just like a husband and wife. It's just like a father and their children. It's like a, being a family. Relationship. That's what Christianity is about. You talk to your mighty God all the time. Why you talk to him? Sometimes you talk to him because he just bless you. You want to praise him. Sometimes this is not working. You say, God, I'm struggling. I need your help. Sometimes you just, somebody else is not feeling good. You go to God for in the behalf of that person. He wants that from us. Relationship. You know? So he saw that in David. He will recognize David like a, a, a somebody, when he sinned, he always asks for forgiveness. He saw in David a man who loved him, who worshiped him, and who experienced God's cleansing and forgiveness. He saw all these things in David, and I believe and I pray that God to sees all this on us. When we talk about this, it's not that we are perfect. No, we are not. We just people who sin all the time. But the good part of this, because we have someone we can go to all the time to talk to him about our life. And that person said, I'm here. Come to me. Don't try to walk away from me because I already knew what you are going through. I already knew your problem. I already knew what you did last night. But just come to me. This is the kind of God we are serving. And he's calling you. When God looked at the heart of David, he saw a man after his own heart. I want God to see that in you. The man after his own heart. You know, like Samuel, when he went to that house, he must rely on God. He can see exactly who he can choose, anointed for, to replace a, a, a soul. But he had to rely on God. So the second point is to pay attention to our action. You know, our action me la. When you uh, the action you are you are putting in front of people is 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 make you make people understand that you believe what you do. So you cannot say something else and start doing something else. But you do something else, it reflect exactly what you have in your heart. You know, so what will, your actions should be a sign of your obedience. I understand that incomplete obedience 
is the same as disobedience. You know, I just talked to you, we talked earlier about what happened to Saul. You know, God said to Saul, go to the uh, Malachite, to the land of Malak, and destroy any human being, animal, anything you see, you need to destroy it. But he went there. He, he had his preference. He looked at what God says, but he gets to the, to, the, to the field. He had making his own preferences. He did what he want. So this is a, you accomplish. We don't want to be able to find, try to accomplish the will of God, you know, and have and, and, and think that we did it. No. It's, it's like a saying, I want it, but I want to do my way. It's not work with God that way. Because God, if he want to bless you, he want to bless you totally. God never blessed in the half. So what we're trying to do here is, what, what, what Saul did is, uh, he went there, he's, he's doing his job, but finally he said, you know what? I'm going to save this for me. I'm going to save this for me. I'm going to save that for me. But God said, that's not what I'm asking for. Destroy everything that is in that land. You know, we have to be careful. And complete obedience is the same as disobedience. I pray that God to give us the spirit of obedience. Bible talk about obedience as more than sacrifice. When God says things, we have to do it. It might be hard for you, but sometimes just get it down the way he wanted and, and just wait to see what God's going to do. Because sometimes we, t- we, we work ourselves out of a situation we shouldn't be. Because it's not comfortable. Because it doesn't look like that's the way I'm supposed to. But God said, do it that way. Do things in God's way is always profitable than to do things in our own ways. We have to learn that. Because it's so important in our Christian work. It's so important to receive the, the blessing of God in our life. God wants to bless you. But if we keep doing things in our own way, how can we be blessed? But when you do things in God's ways, God said, I'm going to bless you. Amen? Are you want to be blessed? Understand that to hear God's words and not to practice it is to reject it. He said, if he, he always said this, if you love me, then I do what I tell you to do. That's the word said. So if he give us a command to do something and uh, we just don't do it, then we disobey. And what he's intended for us by accomplish what he tells us to do, then we can miss it, the whole things. People of God, life is tough. It's tough out there. But it's better for us as a Christian to go through tough moments to enjoy the total, the total blessing of God. Because he said, when I have blessed you, there are no harm added to it. When I bless you, I guarantee, I protect my blessing to you. But the world, when it, in the world, when you are blessed, sometimes that blessing even doesn't stay with you. People always say to me, when you have too much money in your pocket, it's like a hole in your pocket, and you don't even know where the money is going. You walk, you walk, you walk, you never have enough. I know you heard that before. But when God want to bless you, he said, I'm going to protect you, that blessing. You're going to enjoy it to the rest. You're going to finish well with my presence in your, in your life because I'm holding the wheel and I'm guiding you in the place where nobody can come against you. Why not be there? I know in the process, the devil is going to come and say, oh, man, why are you going to do that? Everybody's doing good things. You just, just go do everybody. No. Read your word for yourself sometime. Study the word for yourself. Get part of the Bible study. Get part of people who have the same faith so you can discuss things like I'm saying. Because sometimes you have to be part of it. Otherwise, there are so many uh, things going on out there. Bombard your, 
the ear, things, the news, all those things, they're going to take more place on you. And you're going to feed, you're going to feed in yourself on those things. But God said, if you feed my word in you, then the word that is in you can reveal who I am to yourself. But the things in the world cannot give you enough the things of God. But you need the things of God in your life so he can reveal the things of God for yourself. That's what we call about prayer, Bible study, and get the spiritual things in your heart. God wants to do great things in your life. Be wise. Wise living, we have to choose that. Value the things God values. You know, despise the things he despises. We have to be in the place of changing things around us. Know that God looks on the heart, not the outward appearances. People of God, I'm asking you, do your best. It may not be easy, but God always make a plan that he overcome already. The devil is going to come to try to discourage you. The process is always hard. But you have to be determined to say, I will overcome. Because if you are not determined, you're going to be discouraged. There are determination or discouragement. Determination, God's spirit will help you. Discouragement is the, the world, situation, things. You can go anywhere. But I pray for determination, the spirit of determination to come upon your life. I pray for the spirit of winning to come upon your life. I pray that you can take it to the next level So, because your blessing, it never stay with you. Your blessing will flow down to your family. Your blessing will flow down to people in your workplace. Your blessing will flow down with people who know you. That's why Christianity is so important. Somebody thinks that when we are blessed, we are not like people in the world when everybody just works for themselves. Hey, me, 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 me. But in God's kingdom, when a guy starts blessing you, everybody wanna you want to bless everybody around you. That's the way God thinks works. Be conscious of your work with the Lord. Be conscious of your work with the Lord. If it is a freaking you know, the, the things, I don't want people to come to church sometime and, you know, because when we come to church, we want to praise the Lord, but we want also to experience God to change us. We want to be in the place where we are changed. We are in the place where we want God to do more in our life. We want to create hunger. We want to create thirst for the Lord. We want to create opportunity, God, just to shape us and mold us in likeness. We have Amos who says something to people of God. He said, I hate all your show and pretense. The hypocrisy of your religion festival and solemn assembly. I will not accept your burnt offering and grain offering. You know, he's talking to people who already go to the church, but reality is their heart is not there. We are praying in the name of Jesus Christ to help us in the process because we are in the new covenant. And this new covenant, Jesus' blood will be shed for you and me to wash away all our sin, to prepare us so we can go holiest of holy and worship the Lord with all our heart, soul, and mind. God wants to do great things in our life. And the last point is the trust in the Lord. You know, all things we are talking about today, well, you might be saying in your heart, oh, it's too hard. I won't do this. I couldn't do this. No. It's not hard. I know, I know the world will tell you, oh, you can do this. Oh, it's too much. You know what? When you trust God, he's going to help you. This is, a, this is a spiritual work. It's not physical things that we will train ourselves for. Like we go to gym, you want to have a, a good fit, you know. This is not that. This is a spiritual things we are talking about. If you trust the Lord like, uh, like the writer of this Psalm 20, did, David did, we will go through it together. We will come out of the other side, be successful. So this morning, my word to you, trust the Lord with all your heart and your soul. And just ask him 
freely in your devotion moment when you are by yourself in your room, talk to your God. Read your word in the morning and discuss with God with the scripture that you are reading because he himself is the scripture. When you start putting the scripture in a real place in your heart, talk to him with that. David said, verse 6, that now I know that the Lord saved his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving might of his right hand. You know, he have a faith. David have a faith. And David believed that God can do amazing work in your life. My question to you, do you believe God can change you for the best? Because we have to start from somewhere. Then when you believe, don't back up. Stand on the ground and keep calling upon the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, because he has all the power of this world to do anything that you ask him. Whether it's healing, whether it's a relationship, anything that you need in this life, we have Almighty God, our Lord, our Creator, our King of Kings, who just open arm and invite you, invite you to come to him. So we have three points that we develop today. How God chooses. If you want God to choose you, start working in your heart. Your condition of your heart. And pay attention of our action. When a guy tells you to do something, just don't do half of them. Just follow exactly what God is asking you to do. And the third one is to trust in the Lord. Trust him. That he's going to help you through it. It's not your strength. It's not mine. We know that human beings, we, we trust in, in the physical things who are going to make us look great. But God's kingdom, God himself, with his angels, going to fight a good fight and now we have that you can see with all the five senses. God is real. So my word to you, and I want to declare over you that you are more than a conqueror. Never say that you can do it. Never accept the lie of the world who say that, oh, well, do you know me? Oh, oh, I went through this. Oh, I can. No, 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 no. No, 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 that's not. That's not. You are not by accident. Jeremiah 29 is already applying in your life. God said, I know the plan I have for you. It, the matter is that sometimes you haven't found that plan yet, but that plan is still there for you. Just receive that plan and enjoy your life. And we will always celebrate God and his kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I hope you are blessed this morning. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this morning for your word. We thank you for hope. We thank you that with you, we can finish well. We thank you that help us to have a heart after you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, for those who are watching, I want to challenge you. My challenge is, if you have not in your life been in church before, or you start questioning my, my, yourself what this means, I want to lead you to simple prayer. God talk about, if you confess me as Lord and Savior and believe in your heart, then you are saved. Sometimes, Bible says things, sometimes we don't understand it until you do it before you get it. So can you pray with me right now? Repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. This morning, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me for all my sin and help me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, for everyone who have repeated this prayer, whether through here or those who are watching, I pray, Heavenly Father, by your mercy and grace, make your power transform all of us and those people right now. We give all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. 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 God bless you. Can you give a hand to the Lord?